Hello everyone, welcome to InfoSec Guardian's YouTube channel. C-Risk certification is all about understanding and identifying risks within your organization's IT landscape. So, whether you're preparing for the C-Risk exam or simply looking to enhance your risk management skills, you're in the right place. So, let's get started. Domain 2 IT Risk Assessment contributes to 20% of the exam and expects us to explore how to identify and assess risks effectively. This is a critical step in the risk management process because, without a clear understanding of the risks, we will not be able to make informed decisions on how to mitigate them. The components of risk identification include assets, identify what needs protection. These could be data, hardware, software, or even personnel. Threats. Recognize potential dangers like cyber attacks, natural disasters, or human errors. Vulnerabilities. Discover weaknesses in your systems that could be exploited by threats. Impact. Understand the consequences of a risk materializing, such as financial losses or damage to reputation. Let us now go to the practice questions. In a large multinational corporation, the IT department is planning to upgrade the company's ERP system. The project team is in the early planning stages. Which of the following activities is most relevant for risk identification at this point? Now, let us see the options. Option A, conducting a quantitative risk assessment. Option B, Identifying key project stakeholders. Option C, defining risk response strategies. Option D, analyzing historical risk data. Feel free to pause the video, read the question, read the options, and then reread the question. Now, let us try to see the answer. In the early planning stages, Identifying key project stakeholders is crucial for understanding their concerns, perspectives, and potential risks. This helps in the initial identification of risks. Hence, the correct answer is option B. Identifying key project stakeholders. Now, let us move on to the next question. A healthcare organization is considering the adoption of a new electronic health records, EHR, system. The organization is concerned about potential risks related to data security and compliance with healthcare regulations. Which risk assessment method is most appropriate for evaluating these risks? Now let us see the options. Option A, quantitative risk assessment. Option B, qualitative risk assessment. Option C, semi-quantitative risk assessment. Option D, historical risk assessment. Feel free to pause the video, read the question, read the options, and then reread the question. Now, let us try to see the answer. Qualitative risk assessment is suitable for assessing risks like data security and regulatory compliance as it relies on expert judgment and qualitative data. Hence, the correct answer is option B, qualitative risk assessment. Now, let us move on to the next question. A technology company is expanding its product line to include a new AI-powered device. The project manager is tasked with assessing the potential risks associated with this product launch. Which of the following is an example of an internal risk factor for this project? Now, let us see the options. Option A, competitor actions. Option B, supply chain disruptions. Option C, regulatory changes. Option D, skill set of the development team. Feel free to pause the video, read the question, read the options, and then reread the question. Now, let us try to see the answer. The skill set of the development team is an internal factor that can impact the success of the project. Hence, the correct answer is option D, skill set of the development team. Now, let us move on to the next question. 
A financial institution is considering outsourcing its customer support operations to a third-party service provider. What is a critical step in assessing the risks associated with this outsourcing arrangement? Now, let us see the options. Option A, analyzing the third party's financial stability. Option B, conducting a cost-benefit analysis. Option C, assessing customer satisfaction. Option D, reviewing internal training programs. Feel free to pause the video, read the question, read the options, and then re-read the question. Now, let us try to see the answer. When outsourcing, it's important to assess the financial stability of the third-party provider to ensure they can meet their obligations. Hence, the correct answer is option A. Analyzing the third party's financial stability. Now, let us move on to the next question. A manufacturing company is planning to implement a new automated production line to increase efficiency. During the risk assessment process, they identify a risk related to potential equipment failure. What risk response strategy is most appropriate for this scenario? Now, let us see the options. Option A, avoidance. Option B, acceptance. Option C, mitigation. Option D, transfer. Feel free to pause the video, read the question, read the options, and then reread the question. Now, let us try to see the answer. Mitigation involves taking actions to reduce the likelihood or impact of a risk, such as implementing maintenance procedures to prevent equipment failure. Hence, the correct answer is option C, mitigation. Now, let us move on to the next question. An e-commerce company is launching a new website with enhanced features. During the risk assessment, they identify a risk related to potential server downtime due to increased traffic. What risk response strategy is most suitable for this scenario? Now, let us see the options. Option A, avoidance. Option B, acceptance. Option C, mitigation. Option D, transfer. Feel free to pause the video. Read the question, read the options, and then reread the question. Now, let us try to see the answer. Transferring the risk might involve purchasing insurance to cover losses in case of server downtime due to increased traffic. Hence, the correct answer is option D, transfer. Now, let us move on to the next question. A retail company has assessed the risk of a data breach in its point-of-sale POS systems. The risk assessment indicates a high likelihood of occurrence and significant financial impact. What should the company do next? Now, let us see the options. Option A, accept the risk. Option B, avoid the risk. Option C, mitigate the risk. Option D, transfer the risk. Feel free to pause the video, read the question, read the options, and then reread the question. Now, let us try to see the answer. Given the high likelihood and significant impact, it's advisable to take measures to reduce the risk's impact or likelihood. Hence, the correct answer is option C, mitigate the risk. Now. Let us move on to the next question. A project manager is reviewing the risk register for a complex IT project. The register includes risks that have been assessed and prioritized based on their potential impact on the project's success. What term is commonly used to describe the combination of a risk's likelihood and impact? Now, let us see the options. Option A, risk appetite. Option B, risk threshold. Option C, risk tolerance. Option D, risk exposure. Feel free to pause the video, read the question, 
read the options, and then reread the question. Now, let us try to see the answer. Risk exposure is the combination of a risk's likelihood and impact, and it is commonly used for prioritization. Hence, the correct answer is option D, risk exposure. Now, let us move on to the next question. A financial institution has identified a risk associated with fluctuations in interest rates that could impact its investment portfolio. What risk response strategy is appropriate for managing this financial risk? Now, let us see the options. Option A, acceptance. Option B, mitigation. Option C, avoidance. Option D, transfer. Feel free to pause the video, read the question, read the options, and then reread the question. Now let us try to see the answer. For financial risks, like interest rate fluctuations, mitigation strategies often involve diversifying the investment portfolio or using financial instruments to hedge against rate changes. Hence, the correct answer is option B, mitigation. Now, let us move on to the next question. A technology company is evaluating the risks associated with a new product launch. During the risk assessment, the team identifies a risk related to a potential patent infringement lawsuit. What is the primary purpose of documenting this risk in the risk register? Now, let us see the options. Option A, to assign blame in case of a lawsuit. Option B, to track the cost of potential litigation. Option C, to facilitate communication and risk monitoring. Option D, to demonstrate compliance with legal requirements. Feel free to pause the video, read the question, read the options, and then reread the question. Now, let us try to see the answer. Documenting risks in the risk register helps in communication, monitoring, and developing risk response plans, not assigning blame or tracking costs. Hence, the correct answer is option C, to facilitate communication and risk monitoring. If you find this video useful, do share in the community, subscribe to InfoSec Guardian's channel, and don't forget to hit the bell icon to get new and updates on information security.